was it was so horrible it was it was it, it's it was breaking <laughs> you know that there is also this entire world of psychology and psychiatry and and psychopharmacology and have you explored those solutions ever my profession is i am a psychologist okay so yeah. you understand these things right yes and what is your feeling your feeling is not that this is something that psychology can i was two times in the psychiatry but medication is getting um worse <laughs> Maya. I had a really hard time and experienced a lot in the spiritual way. I need two sources in my life. I had a lot of pain. I had a lot of sexual abuse. Um, one wants to turn me from the light to the dark. And I was fighting this um, energy about two years. And also um, another guy would like to help me. And he was also a bad guy. And I was in the Perian jungle and I almost died there because his intuition was to bring me in another dimension that I die. And I was really dissolving. I was not in my body. And when I came back to Austria in two years, I had a lot of vision. I didn't sleep for one year. I was maybe two months with medication. I tried to send there, but I had even a little thought, the energies go out of my head and I was in the whole night flying around and I only tried to stay in the body. And I realized that I fall down in the consciousness of the spine. There was a lot of electricity and so on. and I was going through the dark, through the deepest deeps of the dark side. My question is how to handle or integrate this experience or also the trauma that I had in, in, in Peru. How long ago was this, Romana? It's 2019. So it's about two years ago? Yeah. yeah. Uh, did you take any uh, substances? The first time when I was in Africa, in Morocco, when the first sorcerer did body um, treatments, I didn't took any substance. Four months after, I couldn't work, I couldn't drive with the car, I was like really... Whoa. Did you take so, any substances? Did you take any... After this, when I consulting a shaman, he was working with ayahuasca, but this was okay. six months later. So you took ayahuasca after that, and that didn't help? No, because this guy was also not um, on the positive side. He wants to have me as a woman. It was a lot of abusing, sexual abusing. Um, and he opened my spine and so much energetical center. I was not anymore in my body. And he also said to me, he wants to make me mad and that I really die. He said he wanted my wisdom and energy and so on. Okay, so this whole story that you're speaking about or these incidents, they are in the past. They're yeah. not in the present tense, right? No. It has happened in the past. Are you yes. ready to leave it in the past? Are you yes. ready today yes. in this call to say, okay, it happened to me. It has taught me certain things. Mm -hmm. And now I start a new life. Are you yeah. ready to do that? Yes. Because these are not small things. Yes. These are not small experiences. Yeah. These are not simple stories you're talking about. These yeah. are occult. Yeah. Just be very calm, very quiet. Center yourself. Feel your center. Take a few deep breaths. And now, just quietly listen to my words. Yeah? Okay? Right. 
So all these things that have happened to you, they've happened in the past. Now, we are in this present moment. And one thing you can really, really rely on, right, is the present moment. In this moment, right now, this moment, nobody can mess with your energies because you're present in this moment, right now try to imagine in this moment, right now you're present you're centered would anyone be able to mess with you now when you're so present and so centered? no no? did you say no? okay so that means that from this moment on in your life, anytime you feel endangered by any sort of vibrations or energies coming from the outside, we'll talk about the inside later, but whenever, anytime in your life, at any moment you feel scared or endangered by people's energies, by situations, by a circumstance that you're in the first thing you do bring yourself to this moment here and now because in this moment here and now nobody can attack you nobody can take away your life energy nobody can be vampirical with you. So, each time that happens, and it happens to everyone, everyone goes into circumstances where you feel something is unusual, something is strange, this is a bad vibration, this is a negative energy. Don't focus on that, but bring yourself to your center. Now, to this moment, present moment and there nothing can attack you, it's a very strange phenomenon but it works like that in the spiritual world that and in the world of the occult as well that when a person is completely in this moment and present no one can manipulate them which is why when there are people attempting to manipulate a person to take their energies, their their Shakti, to take their money, to take their one can say life energy even they can be repelled if the person pulls themselves into this moment so not only does it not impact you but it repels these things it's a very very unusual and simple way to go about it so the reason why people can pull somebody into all of those practices is because that person is not in the present moment and is not tuned in to their own center, their soul, their source, the truth within, the love, you know, that is strong and central to your system. So you have to pull back instantly into this moment and focus on your soul within. It's a practice to do every day and all the time. And no one will be able to attack you after that. Because it is true, there are people who do those things, you know. And it's better then that you... that you are prepared for it. And when you sense it, you come into this moment and tune inward. Anyone in this present moment cannot be impacted by occult manipulation. You cannot be, that's how it is. So you pull yourself into this moment. And that's your key, that's your key to protection. About the electricity and the various movements in your body, it's very likely that you have an awakened Kundalini, not an awakened one, because Kundalini is always awakened, I used that term because that's what people normally call it, but 
it's a disturbed Kundalini. Kundalini Ma is always awake, always awake. This is a powerful source of energy lying at the base of the spinal cord and it moves in the body and it it's always there for a person throughout their lifetime to fight trauma, to, to help a person overcome physical trauma, emotional trauma, conceptual trauma, transformative trauma, and other forms of trauma. But when it is shaken for some reason, and it can happen because a person falls on their head, it can happen because of too much alcohol, it can happen because of too many drugs, too much of yoga done the wrong way, many things like that. So, it seems to me that you have this disturbed Kundalini, and the answer to resolving that movement in your system is and the pain and the and the confusion and the experiences of darkness this is because your system is a system you included not in surrender at all it doesn't know really the meaning of surrender so you have to teach yourself surrender samarpan it's called in sanskrit and that is a bending down, always bending, listening to the Truth, going with the Truth of your system, the Soul, listening to its impulse, and going with that impulse. And the more you learn surrender, and the more you practice this surrender, the more you will be in a balanced state where the disturbed Kundalini quiets down. It's a wonderful key, and it's it's one of the only keys, because when Kundalini is disturbed, unless the person is in total surrender, it's not possible to control that symptom or symptoms. And then people go to neurologists, they go all over the place and they don't find any answers, because nobody really knows about this in modern medicine. Thank you so much, and with the Kundalini Ma, um, I really go in surrender, and before I didn't know that it is Kundalini, and she showed me every trauma, every pain in the in pictures, she pulled me out, I even had one thought and I was, I don't know, in another land and it was really, really, I should say, crazy and I was on the border to madness because it was so intense. The last two years was, yeah, like the hell, but also positive sides of our awareness and deep feelings of love, yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you. It will be all right. Yeah. It'll get better. Yeah. Just be in surrender as much as possible. Bend, bend, bend. Bend and tune into the truth impulse. You train yourself to tune into the truth impulse and to circumvent the loud noise of the ego. You know? Namaskar. Namaskar, Maya. Namaskar. 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 Romana? Um, yes, last time in the video satsang, um, I had the great pleasure to, to meet you, and I felt a back in my subconsciousness, and I felt in tricky, situations and I always go to the truth, to the surrender, to my soul and then there was a, I don't know, a really big energy open and things will happen. It's like people feeling the energy or also my trauma and it makes the people very, some really different things were happened in real life here with their energies. And so I don't know if you have any advice or 
some guidance for me. I really bent down and I really bent down for you, Marishi Capri. This energy that you feel within you, is it a feeling of a truth within you expressing itself? No, no. Sometimes, what yes. does it feel like? When I'm in center in the heart, I really can feel the love, the, the impulse, the a really unbelievable state of love in my heart. Also, when I was a child, when people had pain in the hand, for example, later the people were without any pain and I had it on my body. So I'm like a swam. Ah, this is before you started the practice of tuning into yes. the soul. Yes. So you already had these movements in the system before. Yes, for many, many years. And when I go in temples, I always fell down because the energy are coming and my whole body is shaping. And this was when I was 24, 25. So essentially your system is open. It's open to energy entering into it, you know? And the way to, to keep the system intact so that you don't allow all these energies to enter is to very, very strictly, as much as possible, bring yourself to this moment. Mm -hmm. And in this moment, what you do, you you center yourself and you tune into your truth, your source, that source of love, the truth, not the ego, not mm -hmm. the idea that I am the soul and uh, mm -hmm. stuff like that, but more I am the instrument of the soul. So when you bring yourself to this moment, in those moments when you feel an energy is taking over, and you bring yourself to this moment, that energy cannot take over the system. The system can only be taken over by external forces and energies when you're not present. So it's a way of bringing you to the present moment. And then what will happen, the more you are in this moment, in this moment, like right now, this moment, the more you are here and now, the stronger your system will become to defend itself against external energies entering into the system, generally through the head. I had a lot of pain in my head because I couldn't stay in my, in my body for one year and without any sleeping. And everything was changing in my body. It was like a state of wow, where I got crazy. And now I'm coming back through the truth and to the bending down. When I say I'm an instrument, of the source, really different things happened. People had problems, they fell down on the street. I was there, I get some information. It was really, really strange things what happened. It is okay, but I have not to yes. have thoughts very negative because I have one thought and at the next moment done. The important thing is in this practice, and you have had a history already before you took up this practice. So there's a lot of unlearning that the body has to do. It's not a conceptual unlearning, it's a physical, yeah. material unlearning that your body has to undergo, or it has to allow. And generally, when the system is open and energies can enter, the ego increases. It becomes bigger and bigger and bigger. Because as your system opens up, you also are not present in the body. You're also not present in the system. So what takes over is the ego. So when you start to reintegrate into the body and into being present here and now, there is a period when you are still dealing with a huge ego. This is not a negative thing. It is simply a fact. And that huge ego causes this pain. It causes fear, it causes anger, it causes all these things, a refusal to reintegrate, because reintegrating into the body is a very, very challenging and painful process. It's easier to be outside floating around and sort of, now your period of reintegration is happening. So you need a bit of time, you have to practice this practice for quite some time since you've had it, you know, a person whose awareness has left the system. 
and been outside even for as long as a year. So the reintegration can take many years actually. So it starts out slowly, step by step, step by step, step by step. Have faith in yourself, don't give up, but also realize that if you allow the ego to take charge of your system, then you won't be able to get out of this messy situation. So it's a step-by-step -step process. Each time you feel that fear or that anger or that shaking of the system, bring yourself to this moment, this moment, this moment, always this moment. This moment, there won't be pain, but if you wander away, again it starts. There won't be fear if you wander away, it'll start again. That's the sadhana to start with. And gradually you will gradually you will start to integrate better, you know. And the more you integrate, the more you enter and stay in the system and hold this energy in the system and hold yourself in the present moment, the more you'll start to inhabit your body again and, and be present again and, and become more and more actually aware of the center of the truth of yourself as an instrument, but not in a state of fear, in a state of deep surrender. You have no choice, you have to take that route, because if you don't take that route, you're going to be in trouble. You know, you know that. But have that faith that you will succeed, you know. Be involved, be present, be connected, and gradually you'll resettle into your body, and you'll reintegrate, and then things will be quite okay. Okay. Is correct to not go into the story, only reintegrate the emotions to feel it in the body. It's not just the emotions that you reintegrate, it's actually everything. It's okay. reintegrating the awareness that you are this body, because mm -hmm. you've been out, you've been floating around in space for I don't know how long. So now yeah. it's about reintegrating, it's about coming, mm -hmm. you know what I mean. Yeah. And as you reintegrate, as you do this process, gradually you will, you'll start to feel yourself as a real thing, not just as a combination of concepts and ideas and emotions, but real, physical, material. This spirituality of the future, which is a spirituality of staying here and now in this moment inside the body, very clearly not allowing yourself to leave the system and to integrate into the cellular materiality of your body, even if you've never actually been out of the body. It's to be here and now and to be in a state of in a state of surrender to what? To your soul, to your truth, to your antaratman, to the impulse of truth and love that this system is actually meant to obey and not to the ego, to the ahankar, which is what currently is in charge of your system. So you have to bend and go to the truth, bend and go to the truth, bend and go to the truth. Don't listen to the ego, don't listen to the fear, don't listen to the doubts, don't listen to the anxiety, go to the center of the being where it is solid and quiet and stay there. And again, bring yourself to that. And again, bring yourself to that. And again, and again, that's the way to do it, you know. Thank you. Thank you, Marisika. Namaskar, Maharishika Preti. Namaskar. I'd like to say thank you. I really, I really feel very grounded at the moment and more comfortable than the day before. And um, yes, I would like to say thank you. And I wanted to ask how to hold the balance and to go or to standing in the truth and doing no harm. And also my second thing is in the night, so at three or four o'clock every night I'm awake and a lot of 
big snakes are coming and I had a deep experience and my mind is running and I am one part of myself wants to control it and also in the night I hear the voices like an inner architect is working and then I was shocked oh my god and the thinking is running and then a picture from you is popping up and then I feel the energy and I heard a clear voice she is coming it's important and then I heard your voice and only the word Sangha Thank you. So the first question you had was, Romana, it was about how to maintain the equanimity, right? Yeah. How to maintain that quiet or that centeredness, that groundedness that you're experiencing now. And the way to maintain that is to firstly practice, very importantly, to practice the Panchanga Namaskar, you know, the bending down, going down on your knees to the ground, stretching your hands out, putting your forehead on the floor. And that is the ultimate, yes, exactly. And that is the ultimate expression, material expression of surrender in a state of receiving. So whenever there's some strange feeling about things not being grounded, you can go into that kriya, into that position. And immediately it will it will feel more grounded. Also, to remember that you are not alone, that you are very, very powerfully guided by by the the soul, the truth, you know, and that is at your center, and you are simply an instrument of that truth. You are not a a doer. You are an instrument of the truth. So the truth does through you. That's how it is to be interpreted. That statement, you are not the doer. You are the one that is in surrender. So whenever there are situations that put you out of your balance and your equanimity, you just pull into that state of being in surrender, down, bend down, especially someone like you with the kind of energetic action going on in your body. It is advisable to do that, you know, and then you'll feel like, uh, you'll feel a solidity in your system which you won't know otherwise if you're not in surrender. So you do that each and every time you pull yourself down into that state of surrender. If you are feeling that that groundedness is, is dissolving or you're not feeling connected anymore to your center, that is an important thing about you waking up in the early hours of the mornings that is the what what is called in sanskrit the brahma muhurta it's the hour of the gods it's when the gods awake and what that actually means is that that is the time of the day when the darkness and all the energies of darkness that go with the darkness, also leave. And with the light of the sun, you also have the re-energizing of the body, the beginning of that re-energizing. And it is at that hour, actually, that you are waking up, watching the darknesses leave, and the appearance of light in your life. And in your story of your life, point in your life that is represented by this voice and this person that you that you are now in contact with which is me because I am appearing in your dreams or visions and that means somehow that time of of desperation and, and also where you were buffeted around by the energy is over and it is now time to to tune in to your truth with guidance when required and to open yourself to be part of a sangha a family of 
seekers that are joined in a similar search and also on a similar path. Sangha means a family, a group that is held together by a common ideal. If one wants to interpret it in those terms, one can. And the snakes leaving is the energies that, that are causing disturbances in your system, that in yourself that is blocking these energies from moving freely is disappearing. As you bend, as you surrender, 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 as you become more and more an instrument of truth, an instrument, an instrument, an instrument, all of those energies will find their place and will move and flow like they're supposed to. And there won't be any blockages. And light will come into your life, or is coming into it already. Light meaning the ability to live without fear, to live without confusion, to live with at least a, a modicum of health in the materiality of your body, and to have emotions that don't buffet you all around, but that are bearable. To have a, a thinking which is not overburdened by thoughts, but which is kept at a minimum, you know. To have a creativity which is allowed to blossom and flower without any blocks. That's what gradually starts taking over. If you allow it to, and if you don't allow the ahankar, the ego, to suddenly jump in and say, no, 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 this is not how it is, and you are being fooled here, and this one is not okay, and that is not okay, and you know. Yes. Namaskar. 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 Yes, Romana. Namaskar. What is about the spirit? The focusing is on the soul, on the inner guidance, and the Shakti, and so on. And what is with the spirits? Because before I made this practice, I had a very strong connection to my spirit, and I felt also a lot of love with the spirit. And now it feels like different when I go like with my soul. Yes, the spirits are there, they do what they have to do. Okay. And you're not denying them and their existence, but you are not a spirit as yet. You're an embodied being, so you can also just go with the embodied experience. And the spirits will do what they have to do, which is in a disembodied plane. So you stay in the embodied existence and you do work through this body, experience life through this body. And it's not that the spirits will disappear or that they will love you less. They are in their plane of existence. You are in your plane. That is why there is this body called Romana. Else you would be a spirit. Thank you so much. And one question, if it's time, or yes. how do you think about the combination self-realization process and healing process? Is a combination possible or is this a choice to go with one part? As you self-realize, you also heal those parts of your being which need healing. It's physical healing, it's emotional healing, it's conceptual healing. You know, people that are so mad because so many questions are going on, that quiet settles in the thinking when you bend down to the source as an instrument, you know. You are an instrument of the truth. And so, as you deepen in that being an instrument, you become so strong. Male who is who is in that surrender becomes that much stronger as a male. 
and a female becomes that much stronger as a female. In fact, a male becomes more male even, and a female more female, the more there is surrender. And that conceptual mess, confusion, it really, really reduces, it heals, it, it heals because you learn to understand that thinking is not a way of knowing, that surrender and acting as an instrument of the Truth is a way of knowing. So obviously there is healing in the whole system, and there is also a growing of powers that were not there before, and I don't mean this in the sense of having power over other people and being this powerful person that's just striding through the city with a big ego ball on their head. No, it's this quiet, intense power of living a life in the Truth, and yet embracing everything, only if the Truth is flowing with it. That's the point. So you just really do become stronger. And the Spirits will do what they have to do, and you do what you have to do. And if there is real need for communication, there can be, but most of the time it's not needed, because the Spirits are made of the same material as your Soul is. So when you're in tune with the Soul, you're also in tune with everything else. Thank you so much. I don't want to play these games again which in the society, so many parts of myself are going away, 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 and also my profession and everything. And yes, I have to find myself, yeah, to embrace the new things. Yes, and to normalize, you know, yeah. to normalize, yeah. to start living a simple life. Maybe, maybe having a partner, just enjoying the simple beauty of this, thing called living, and not complicating it with too many desires, and too many projections, and too many memories, just to be a little bit in the here and the now, in a state of surrender as an instrument. Yes. Thank you. Namaskar, Mahavishika. Namaskar. My mom is sitting next to me because I am actually not in a good condition. And you know something about me, and um, I am a lot of struggling. I also realized that I fall out of the truth because I was in another energy field. When I was four years old, I dreamed that my mother will die with 33 years. So I saw and feel that what happened also in my childhood, that I will die and so on. And I um, could not handle it. And when I was in Peru, the man, he wants that I die. And in my consciousness, everything is mixed up. I saw really, really big snacks. And this time, um, I I got some information also from a healer about my mom. I had a, I had so much fears that she will die, <laughs> and was in other dimension. And I get all all informations about my life, about the lives of my parents. And so I was fighting with myself. Okay, you said your mother is with you. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Namaskar. Yeah. Namaskar. Because this is an extreme situation, it's all right that your mother is with you. That would not be allowed otherwise, right? I know, I know. And for that reason, because okay. I really feel so. Okay, okay. okay. So, and so. Just, it's was, all right. Yeah. Listen to me. Listen to me. Now, just first you calm down. Okay? Okay. I, I can see both of you. That's better. Yes. Right. Just stay close together. Okay, all right. I would like to understand one thing. When you spoke about this experience in Peru, did you take any kind of substances? Yeah. Was it ayahuasca? Yeah. Okay. So before you took the ayahuasca, you didn't have these experiences, right? Um, I had the uh, shaking. Um, did you have the? Did you have the? movement of Kundalini Shakti in the I body? I always got the trance, 
and my whole body was shaking, but I get not the pictures because I think I had too much traumas, but in my knowing, um, it reached something in me. I also had the feeling... Um, uh, I, Romana, yeah. Romana, one, one second. And I'm, I was I'm speaking in you, another language. I'm asking you something specific. Before you took the ayahuasca, did you have this extreme heat movements in the body? No. This heat that you're feeling in the body, this extreme heat, that sounds very much like a disturbed Kundalini, and you know the practices which are spoken about here. Have yeah. you been practicing the surrender yeah. that yes. is spoken about? Yes. yes. So today you're coming here because you're afraid that your mother will die? Is that what it is? I was identifying with the pictures I got um, when I go on streets, this is I, this is I, when people are talking, everything is... Um, when people say, no, this is not good, this comes in my mind and change everything. It is really, yeah. So, why are you afraid of that? I'm afraid of what came up in the deepest deep when I was like in the hell. I had so much pain. I had so much pain. <laughs> what was the kind of pain you had? I didn't sleep 2019 for one year. I couldn't sleep. And the man, he was talking the whole night with me and I could not sleep anymore. And I had yes. a lot of uh, sticks here and in my heart, so much pain, so much pain mm -hmm. from witchcraft. It was, it was so horrible. It was, it was, it, it's, it was breaking. But, it, but it's not going on now that no. much anymore, right? No. So it will get less and less, but you have to practice that bending down and surrender. Whenever these fears arise, all you have to do is to go down on the ground, stretch your arms out and believe in that position that you're receiving. Train yourself to go into receiving from the soul, from the source, from the center of your being. Did you do that when this fear came up? Did you go down and stretch out on the ground with your forehead touching the ground, arms stretched out very quietly? Have you yeah. been doing that? Yes, yes. So every time it happens, you have to do that. Even if you're on the middle of the road, you yeah. go back home, you go back yeah. home, or you go to a place where people won't think you're totally mad, you shouldn't do this on the road, you shouldn't do this in public streets where people will be suspicious of you. Where do you live, Romana? In Austria. Which country? Austria? In Austria, yes. Austria, okay. Okay. And, and you don't have to be afraid, don't give in to those fears, because when you get afraid, you're going with the ego and then it expands the ego and the, and the energy starts to disturb you even more. You understand? You're, yeah, you're, you will be fine. Okay, I was mixed my body with all different things, with computer, with this, with that. And I feel every energy filed in my body because I mixed so much up with my parents, with dogs, with I don't know what I... Yeah. You know that there is also this entire world of psychology and psychiatry and and psychopharmacology and have you explored those solutions ever? My profession is, I am a psychologist. Okay, so yeah. you understand these things, right? Yes. And what is your feeling? Your feeling is not that this is something that psychology can... I was two times in the psychiatry, but medication is getting um, worse. It was not the way for me. I had so a deep a gratitude and a belief that everything will be good. But when I feel it like so much physical also here. Romana has two things. One is that you simply cannot give up and not see that it will get better. It will get better. It's a matter of 
literally of moving immediately, immediately. There's no waiting. You have to immediately, you have to go into that position of surrender. And remember that at the center of your being, at the center of your being is love. All of this stuff that's going around is just noise in your head. If you move to the center of your being, maybe you can think of it where your heart is, you just move there, that is the love. It's only because the ego has grown so big and that fear has grown so big, which is what happened through the ayahuasca experience, it will get better, it will get better, but you have to... Life is telling you, Romana, you have to move into surrender. You cannot give in to that ego anymore. All those ideas, all those things that you're experiencing, they're happening, they're happening in what is the ego lie, you know? It's a lie. It's not the yeah. fundamental expression of life, is it? As a baby, you don't have all those things, right? It's only because the ego has grown over a period of time that now you start to go with that ego story. Don't give in to it. Always remember, tell yourself, no, Romana, this is the ego. Go into the truth, bend down, go into the truth. Feel that truth within you. And each and every time, you have to do that as a, as a very, very, very disciplined thing. Not to give in to all those things. The moment the head starts to do all that, you bend down, lie down flat on the floor, stretch your arms out in surrender and move your attention to the center of your being. Don't give in to all that noise outside. That's just noise. You know that it's noise. It's just sometimes you're too weak because you're tired of this thing continuously going on and then you give in to it. But don't give in, fight it all the time. And after a few days, again, it'll because I remember that it had become better. Yeah. And then yeah. you and then you forgot, right? To do that, right? No, I Maybe. was in, in the inner conflict of um healing art because my mom did a lot of healing work. I do also the practice um with the truth to the truth. And then I realized that some parts of myself, yeah, you're not good, you was a liar and so on. Yeah. Romana. There is also maybe a part of you which doesn't want to accept that this teaching is coming from me and that you want to somehow try to do it in another way. Is that possible? Um, yeah, I was thinking um, I have to do more and I do maybe I have to clean something and this and that, but I'm I could not um, give you up. You always was in my mind. I always go to the truth, to yourself. And then mm -hmm. really my mom, my mom really know that I said, Mama Rishika said that I have to do this and this. And really I, I bent down, I bent down how often I could, but it was an inner conflict with me. With most people who have a Kundalini disturbance, and I think it's a good idea if your mother listens in this time. What happens is that they come to me and then either through the presence or through the practice, they start to get better and immediately they get a little better and then the ego pops up again because they don't want to accept that this knowledge is coming from me and they prefer to try and see if there are other ways by which they can move forward, which is also fine. But the thing with this is that you're messing around with a Shakti, it's a power. You cannot take your ego trip with it. You cannot. You have to bend down. And, and I'm very glad if you find somebody who has you know, who can help you more, that would be fully fine. But the thing is that it isn't easy to find someone who understands how this Shakti works and also has that ability to quiet that Shakti down. So the problem is that all the Kundalini people, they are like that because of the big ego. If there's no ego, then there's no Kundalini disturbance. The disturbance is there to, to make you realize that your life is governed by that ego. 
So you move into the truth and it will just dissipate. But when it dissipates, again, that ego builds up that you can handle it on your own. You can do this, you can do that. Finally, you are handling it on your own, but you'll have to realize that it is not something that will allow you to move into ego. The moment you do that, again, the ego will start to expand. You have to bend down, you have to be humble. And, and you were doing much better. I remember your story. Yeah, and, and really, mm -hmm. and Maharishika, um, I feel so good. Everything was so good. And this was a little, a little thought. And I was asking my mom, Ma, would you join um, this uh, workshop? And then my system was, oh my God, you did the wrong thing. This was the only thing. I don't go to another healer or something like that. Just stop a second. I don't have any problems if you go to a healer who can heal you. I think it's beautiful. I think this world is full of great teachers, healers, gurus. It's it's wonderful to have these people in this world. And if you have somebody that is able to support you through that process, I'm there with you. I would never object to that at all. You know, I want you to strengthen up and normalize. It's not about going to another healer or this or that. It's about within you, there is a resistance to the idea that somebody has managed to quiet this Shakti down in you, even if it is for a day or two. That's the resistance that has to go. Your system is not ready to say, okay, Marshika has said this, amazing, I'm going to go with it. And I'm so grateful to her. And that's fine. You have to be in that posture. The, I really was praying to you. I really feel you in my heart. I really, for my, my mom can really tell this. I really love you, Maharishika. And I don't want to go every, to another, to another one because I really feel a deep connection. And I don't know, it's like a, a laugh on another level to you from my heart. It is really the truth. So, so that's beautiful and that's fine. I also feel that you should not feel guilty if you go to other people. It's not the problem. The problem is there cannot be resistance to other people or to whoever it is. The resistance is what is causing this, not just to me, but maybe even to others. The thing is that that ego will quiet down if you just bend down and keep it simple. Yeah. Just keep it simple. Every day you're bending, every day you're... It's not easy, Romana. I understand that it's really, really not easy. It's painful and it's very, very, very frightening. But don't be afraid. It'll be all right. Remember, you have a center. That's where your heart is. Be in touch with it. I am not a healer. I'm only someone who understands how Kundalini works, you know. I'm not a healer, that's not my work. So I'm not saying that I can heal you, I'm saying that you can heal yourself by moving into a state of surrender and being a psychologist, you already know the medical limitations of that field. So this is the way that is going to take you to a quiet and a, and a peace. And I mean, peace, you know, peace is something you have it for one second, then it's not there. It's not the aim. The aim is to have joy in one's life. And that will come. Just don't be afraid. It'll be fine. Move to your center. Move to the divine within, to the to the soul. And, and remember, it is love. Then how will you be afraid? Where will the fear be if you know that there is love there? At the center, at the Antar Guru. The Antar Guru means the inner Guru, the inner Master, which is love. So that is your center. That's where you go when you go into surrender. Okay? So... Don't be afraid, it'll be fine. And, and whenever, wherever you are, if something like this happens, immediately find a quiet spot somewhere where nobody can see you, in a garden maybe, in a, in a park, and lie down and do the surrender. And also try to see that you can, that you can have contact with Mother Earth yes. sometimes. Yes? yes? Yes. Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. Don't give in to the fear. That's the main problem. Okay.
Thank you so much. And I really, I really go with you from my, from my heart. Thank you. Yes, Namaste. And you'll be fully fine. You just yeah. have to always move to that center because that ayahuasca experience has disturbed the Kundalini and it's now there moving around. And when the ego is big, then it starts to, to create these disturbances. And when the ego is small, it quiets down. It's a Shakti, you know, it's an energy, it's power. One can, one can function with it. So you keep the ego down, don't give in to fear. Whatever it is, just stand up and say, I'm not afraid. Even if I die, that's fine. I'll die, then that's fine. But I'm not going to be afraid. Mm -hmm. That's the approach, be a warrior. Stand up, take a sword in your hand and cut off the head of that fear and move to your love, you are love, move into that center. What are you afraid of, few images here and there? Right? Don't give in to that nonsense anymore. Okay? Yes. All right. Okay. All right. Namaskar. You'll be fine. Thank you. Namaskar. Namaskar.